the picture of domestic bliss. Beautiful house, Newport Coast. Outside and upstairs, there's been violence. This is now a crime scene. Where are the Chadwicks? They took her. They took her. Who took her? The guy broke into my house. Might be going to Mexico or somewhere. Now we've got a mystery. Nobody thought they would ever abandon their children. Their children were their lives. And it's all leading to one international manhunt. We're not going away. Let's get this guy. It's a very happy place with palm trees and beautiful people. That's, that's Newport. And here in this picture-perfect suburb of wealth and beauty live the Chadwick family. Peter, QC, and their three sons. We don't know really what was going on behind closed doors, but it sounds like they had a lot of secrets between them. October 10th of 2012 happened to be a typical fall day for Southern California. In the late afternoon, the kids got on the bus after school, went to the bus stop near mom and dad's home, and one of the parents would be there religiously. One of the neighbors is driving her children home from the bus stop, and they notice that Peter and QC Chadwick's children are just standing there. Did they get in an accident? What could have happened? Now it's time for a welfare check. The Newport Beach police then proceed to go to the Chadwick's house. We were looking for anything abnormal. And as I walked around, it looked extremely clean. The vacuum lines and the carpet, there was a lot of family photos. You can tell that it appeared that this was a normal, happy family. We made our way to the master bathroom. That's when it looked like something was suspicious. I can see a broken vase along the edge of the bathtub. As soon as I saw the blood, you knew there was a story there. Once they realize that there's nobody in the home who needs help, this becomes more of a missing persons investigation with the blood being a definite concern that something might have gone horribly wrong. QC and Peter Chadwick are both missing. The next morning, October 11th, still no sign of the Chadwicks. And it's very, very concerning. Around 5.30 in the morning, something very strange happens. 911 dispatchers in San Diego get a very bizarre call. And it's none other than Peter Chadwick. Emma, what emergency? This is Crystal. Yeah, my, wife, my wife's dead. Right. OK, so where exactly is she? What? Where is she? They took her. They took her. Who took her? The guy broke into my house. He, he drove me here. He, he had a friend. They, they just gone, they've gone in a pickup truck. OK, so your wife is dead. She's dead. Chadwick appears to know a few potentially helpful details about the kidnapper. A man named Juan had kidnapped her and him. Uh, I picked him up to, to look at some painting work at the house. I brought him to the house. I immediately sent a team down to San Diego to interview Peter Chadwick. His story does not match the 911 tape, and now he's given us a more elaborate story. He invites Juan to his house to give him an estimate. Juan walks upstairs to take a look around, and Peter stays downstairs. He claims he hears his wife scream, Pete, Pete! And he runs upstairs. And he finds Juan strangling QC in the bathtub. And then Juan allegedly took a small, two-inch, dull Swiss Army knife blade and threatened Peter with it. Juan holds him at bay immediately while still strangling his wife and holding her underwater. She drowned. She drowned. And Peter's story is that he complies and Juan and Peter wrap her in her blanket and put her in the back of their Lexus SUV. And then Juan allegedly made him drive around for more than 12 hours. That's the story Peter initially gives us. We do, uh, obviously, based on our investigation, believe that she has been the victim of a homicide and we are searching for her body. Peter is already telling the San Diego Police Department that QC is dead. 
he's talking to them in a very low, very casual, unemotional way, they notice scratches, scratches on his face and neck. Mmm, the plot thickens. And they're starting to wonder, what have we got here? Either he's the aggressor or he's the victim. There are murder cases where it takes you weeks or months to figure out where somebody's lying. This is instantaneous. We quickly realized there was some turmoil in the marriage. QC wanted to grow and blossom into the person that she really was. And I think Peter wasn't entirely supportive of that. He teased her a lot, joked, ridiculed at times. He was very controlling. They talked to QC's close friends. They heard that divorce had come up as a subject. He doesn't want that to happen. QC's got tons of money. Right around noon of October 11th, we placed Peter Chadwick under arrest for homicide. He stands accused of not only killing his wife, Kui, seen here in a family photo on Facebook, but possibly hiding her body. Mr. Chadwick was uh, in his car for about 18 hours with the body, so uh, could be anywhere in Southern California right now. And seven days after QC went missing, we got a call from Peter Chadwick's attorney indicating that Peter was going to give us the location of QC's body. Peter Chadwick says he has put her in a dumpster. Authorities confirm the body discovered inside this lakeside dumpster yesterday afternoon is that of Kui Chadwick. What do you think really happened that, that day? Uh, I believe she put up a good fight, was significantly traumatized with blunt force injuries, and then the ultimate assault was strangulation. Arguing and fighting with somebody is one thing. For it to turn physical is another. To take away your children's mother, to continue to torture her, essentially. I mean, you watch that person struggle and fight. It's particularly depraved. And now we think, uh, the investigation's in the bag. He's going to go to prison for the homicide. On Monday, Chadwick pleaded not guilty to murder charges. Because he had no criminal history and because of having the three children who um, could be believed to be a tie to him to stay local, uh, he was allowed to post bail, which in the California system was set at a million dollars. The conditions on his bail essentially were do not leave the country, have no contact with certain members of the family, and we took his passport to reduce his flight risk potential. So there he is in Santa Barbara staying with his dad. He has a relationship with his kids, and for two years he shows up for hearings. He's making his court appearances until one day he does not. He had a safe deposit box, and that deposit box was emptied. And now it's very clear to everyone that Peter Chadwick has become a fugitive from justice. So we immediately set off on a manhunt. He could be anywhere. Meantime, Peter Chadwick, unknown to the police, is thousands of miles away. Wait until you hear what our team uncovered investigating this one man. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.